Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we are rounding out my 2022 sunscreen series and we are finishing off with tinted sunscreens. Tinted sunscreens are something that I love because they can help bridge the gap between your everyday sunscreen application and your makeup applications. You can either use it to give your foundation a little bit more coverage or you can use it as a standalone complexion base product. Today I have them sorted into a particular order so we are going to be talking about them from my least favorite to my most favorite and since they are tinted I'm going to be sharing swatches with all of you so without further ado let's get right into the video. The first sunscreen we are going to be looking at today and therefore my least favorite scent tinted sunscreen I tried this year is the My Shell Dermaceuticals Sun Shield Liquid SPF 50. This is a zinc oxide sunscreen. It is a very liquidy formula, so you need to make sure you give it a very, very good shaking. And when you think it's mixed enough, keep mixing. I own Shade Light. This is available in five shades altogether. Here in Canada, it retails for $30.50 and you get 30 mil of product, which breaks down to about a dollar and two cent per mil. Now, this sunscreen, it is one that one of my favorite YouTubers raved about, Angie from Hot and Flashy, and normally I love everything that she mentions and I have really good success with it. But, you know, this is the example of just because it works for one person doesn't mean it's work for someone else. So when I was in the States back during the holiday season, I picked this up at Ulta and I tried it out immediately and I was definitely surprised. So here is a little dollop on my arm and let's see, I hope you all can see that, but there is the shade. So it's a little bit darker than my body, but it's a nice shade for my face and it does work for my face. The issue I have with it is my skin type is normal to oily. I can get quite oily throughout my T-zone, especially in the warmer months. That being said, I didn't want to judge the sunscreen too harshly because back when I was in Virginia for the holidays, it was winter. Like it was warmer than it is here in Toronto, but it was still winter. It's not very humid and not getting really sweaty. My skin was feeling a little kind of off. So I was like, let's wait for Toronto weather to warm up, try it out again. And now that it's spring here, it's warmer. I have been trying to wear this a lot more and I just don't like it. I feel like it makes my skin look dry and it accentuates large pores and texture, especially around my nose and the center of my forehead area. So for me, this one is my least favorite of the grouping that I've tried this year. I don't think it's bad. I feel like if you try it, you love it, that's amazing. It's just it's not one that I love. I have had such mixed feelings on. I did a YouTube shorts on it last year when this first was released. This is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios Mineral One SPF 50 Plus. And this one I have in shade, oh, it's in, it's written in white right up here, but it says shade one light. So here in Canada, this retails for $30 for 30 mil of product. That is a dollar per mil. It's also available in five shades and it is a titanium dioxide based sunscreen. I tried this out for the longest time as a thin layer over my morning sunscreen. So just whatever sunscreen I was wearing, I've worn it with several different of my mineral sunscreens that I really enjoy. And not horrible, but this one has an issue I wasn't expecting from a sunscreen and you know, just because that is something I didn't love about it, I feel like someone else out there will really love it. So here is the dollop of the Loris Rosé next to the Michelle and blending it out, especially in comparison to that, this has a very rich, creamy texture. It feels like that of a traditional, almost like a night cream texture. Like I think about something like Oh goodness, what was it? When I worked for Estee Lauder years ago, there was like a, oh goodness, Perfectionist? Was it called Perfectionist in a purple bottle? They had a nighttime cream and it had a very rich texture. But here is the La roche here's the Michelle. You can see it has a lot more shine. The thing that is very unexpected about this is it has coverage. This is 
easily a medium to full coverage foundation. Now, for the last couple of weekends, my husband and I, we've been trying to do more. We've been trying to have more of a work-life separation, especially since I've been getting ready to go on vacation. I film, edit, and reply to comments on the weekends. And lately, we've just been like, you know what? We're working way too much. Let's, let's take some time. So we've been going to movies a lot. This past weekend, <laughs> we went to go see the Fantastic Beast Secrets of Dumbledore. And I was hearing for the movie. I put this on and it had been several hours since I applied my morning sunscreen. And I was like, okay, well, I need to just apply full sunscreen again because we're gonna be outside. I'm gonna be driving to the theater. So I need to make sure I'm having enough sunscreen on. So, so I applied this, that full one fourth teaspoon measure to my face and oh my goodness, everything was blanked out. I had coverage. There was a ton of coverage and that is not a bad thing. It's just something that intimidates me when I put it on and I was like, oh goodness. And I, you know, I took my like little blending sponge. I always use dry. Uh, this is one from Real Techniques. This is their powder sponge. I don't like it for powder. I use this for blending out edges on tinted sunscreen. So I had this and I'm going around like my hairline, my facial hair, my eyebrows, trying to blend this out. And it was one of those moments where I'm running behind schedule. I don't have time to take it off, redo my skincare, redo my sunscreen. So it's like, okay, let's add makeup on top. <laughs> So I started off with a bronzer and then it, it's like, it's like the sunscreen was eating my bronzer. It's like bronzer, nowhere to be found. So then I'm like, all right, let's try blush. So I added blush on top of it. It's like, this had just so much coverage that my normal method of application of applying sheer washes, it wasn't showing up. It was just like full opaque coverage. And I'm like, okay. So then I ran in here, grabbed a different bronzer, grabbed a different blush, grabbed a more dense powder brush and I put it on. And by the end, my husband was like, are you just wearing foundation? I'm like, oh my gosh, no. I've got two blushes, two bronzers, a setting powder and sunscreen on. He's like, okay, but what foundation? I was like, I'm not wearing sun. I'm not wearing a foundation. I only have on this sunscreen. He's like, wow. He's like, that's a lot more full coverage than you ever wear. I'm like, I know. If you want a very full coverage tinted mineral sunscreen that is available in a few different shades, you might enjoy this one. For me, I might use this as a spot concealer when I need it, but it's it's very, very hydrating and it's very full coverage. And you can see, even though it's been staying on my arm, it still has that sheen and the sheen doesn't really go away. That's why I added powder on top. And when adding the powder on top, the powder almost wants to stick to it versus blending. So you need to make sure you're using a very fine, fine powder, very light amount, tap it over and then gently kind of sweep to diffuse out the pigment or else you're gonna have a clump of powder where nothing else is going to apply anywhere else. So not bad, not my favorite. Great if you are a full coverage guy or gal. The sunscreen I'm wearing today, and this was one that I loved for such a long time. I have the older packaging, it's now in a different packaging and there's three shades. This is the Australian Gold Boat botanical tinted sunscreen broad spectrum SPF 50. So with mine being the original, it is now available in different tints and this tint is now known as fair to light. That being said, fair to light is, here's the sunscreen, here's my neck, Here's my arm. It's too dark for me. This is like a good fake tan SPF. This includes the filters, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. You're getting both of our mineral or physical filters in here. This retails for $19.97. You get 89 mil of product, and that breaks down to 22 cent per mil, and this is available in three shades. So this formula at first I felt was quite unique because it is a very airy, whipped texture. It's almost like a meringue. Like you can see, it has a very stiff peak. If you're someone who's into baking, you'll know all about those stiff peaks when you are making meringues. And it has a thicker texture. It blends out quite well. It's very airy. It does have a very nice pinky, peachy undertone but that still is too dark for me. So there you can see the My Shell, La roche -Posay, and then the Australian Gold and Fair to Light. You can see it is a lot 
warmer and more of a pinky peach than the other shade. This does dry down to a matte finish. It has a very velvety finish. It's not a drying matte. It's a very natural velvet matte. It does a beautiful job at smoothing the appearance of enlarged pores texture. If you're someone who gets really oily throughout the day, it will take the edge off that. My issue and what has prevented me from buying another bottle, because this one I am about down to here in it, so I'm almost done with this bottle. But for me, it, the shade is one that worked for me before I did my IPL to get rid of some hyperpigmentation. And now that, you know, I'm a lot more diligent with the treatments I've had done in clinic, things that I've done at home to work on my hyperpigmentation, balancing out my skin tone, this is something that's just too dark for me now. So if you have a little bit of a darker skin tone than I do, and you are someone who has a warmer undertone than I do with an oily skin type where you like more of a velvety matte finish, I think you might really enjoy this one. One that I have been using since before I started YouTube. This is from the brand Neo Strata. This is the Defend Sheer physical protection sunscreen a broad spectrum SPF 50 with a PA rating of 4 plus this sunscreen uses the filters titanium dioxide and zinc oxide so both of the mineral physical protectants and it is $33 for 50 mil of product which breaks 66 cent per mil and this is available in one shake this is another liquidy formula you need to make sure you give it a good shake the neo strata and this one is a very interesting one this is an easy sunscreen to wear to the full amount if you are someone who's using this as your only sunscreen for the day it's very liquidy it's very sheer so it's easy to build upon itself without looking heavy or feeling heavy this does start to dry down you can see this is going to be a little bit more neutral than the Australian and gold. As much as I used to love this one, this is one I haven't been using as much. It's one I'm trying to use up and using on my ears when they feel a little bit more red throughout the day. This looks really nice on the skin. It has more of a natural finish. It's not overly matte. It's not overly luminous. It layers on itself well throughout the day. It's just, it's nice. It's just not one I reach for because I found things I like a little bit better. So definitely not a bad sunscreen. It's one I like. It's just, I think there's better ones out there. And you can see as it dries down, it's starting to take on more of that natural finish where it doesn't have as much glow. And I have mentioned this a few times because this is one I've had a little bit of a love. This is one I've had a little bit of an on and off relationship with. This is the Dr. Sam's Flawless Gossamer Tint in Tint 01. This is a broad spectrum SPF 50. So this sunscreen, so the Dr. Sam sunscreen includes zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. It retails for $50 for 50 mil, which is a dollar per mil. It's available in two tints and one that is untinted. Here in Canada, it is not the easiest thing to get. Here in Canada, we get very very steep duty or import fees. When I was looking at buying this before here, I was going to get hit with a pretty steep one. So I waited to pick this up when I was in Virginia. Dr. Sam does have shipping to the US. So I ordered it, sent it to my parents' house and that way I didn't have to pay the import fee. With my trip to the US, I picked up several tinted sunscreens that I couldn't easily get my hands on here in Canada. And this is one I hadn't really worn when I was in Virginia. We were taking a weekend trip to Miami to visit a few friends. I hadn't been to Florida in a few years. I underestimated how hot Florida was going to be the week before Christmas and it was so humid and I don't do well with humidity or heat in general. I packed this one and for my daytime skincare routine, I had a moisturizer, a cleanser, a moisturizer, and my sunscreen. This texture is a very moisturizing souffle-like texture. It definitely has more slippy emollients compared to the other sunscreens we've had. I feel like it has a little bit more of a glide and slip to it than even the La Roche-Posay. So here is the Dr. Sam. My non-expertise in swatching is coming through, but so far the Dr. Sam's is the one the better matches I have for my skin tone. The reason I packed this with me to go to Miami, Dr. Sam is one of the first people I ever saw who talked about the importance of dosages within your skincare products. And with on her products here on the back, it says use six pumps for face. And that was like, great. I know I need to put six pumps of this on before I go out. 
Six pumps of this is a lot. And this is a sunscreen that when I got up in the morning, I would have to break up my application in two doses. So I would get up, wash my face, moisturize, let my moisturizer kind of sink into my skin as I brushed my teeth and did my morning like brushing, flossing routine. And then I would apply three pumps of this, go downstairs, have breakfast, have coffee, and then come upstairs and apply my other three pumps of this because it is very slippery. It's very slick. And it's a sunscreen that feels very humectic rich because when we went out in Miami, I just remember I felt so, so gross. We went over to, I believe it was called the design district that day. I will never forget how gross I felt. It's like the humidity was attracting itself to the sunscreen. And I was standing in one of the designer boutiques and where they had their air conditioning going, it was like, oh my goodness, I can feel everything on my face. It was just, it was so, so unpleasant. So I did not touch the sunscreen again until I came back home to Toronto. Here, I love this, really love this. In winter, it is wonderful. And I wore this a few weekends ago when we went out for my husband's birthday and we went to go see the Doctor Strange movie. And I wore this all day. I touched up with it while I was out. This is wonderful here in Toronto, a little bit cooler, less humid, very comfortable one. But I love this. I love the shade that it is, but with me not being able to wear it when it is really warm, that did knock it down a little bit because I do have some other ones that wear better in humidity. Paula's Choice Resist, super light daily wrinkled fence, broad spectrum SPF 30 with antioxidants. This sunscreen uses the filter zinc oxide. It comes in one shade and it retails for $41 for 60 mil of product, which is 68 cent per mil. And it is available in two sizes. This is a sunscreen I loved. I've used for quite a while. And I can't remember if this is my second or third bottle. Here is the Dr. Sam's. Here's the Paula's Choice. And this is the most cool or pink undertone that we've experienced so far. This is another sunscreen that has a very natural skin-like demi matte finished. It has a slightly smoothing effect on texture and pore size. It feels very comfortable. I've heard some people mention this can feel a little drying on the skin. Sometimes with mineral filters like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, they can leave some people feeling a little bit more dry. With me having more normal to combination skin, I have not had any issues with this. Another issue I feel like some people would have is with this shade being so cool in the undertone, it might pull a little too pinky for some people. So if you're gonna be wearing this under a foundation, that might be okay for you. But if you're wearing it by itself and it's not like a good skin tone match, you might have some difficulty, but I really enjoyed this one. I have an honorable mention because this is a very targeted sunscreen and I really like it. This little guy, this is the Super Goop Bright Eyed SPF 40, and this has the inclusion of zinc oxide. This retails for $48 for 15 mil of product, which breaks down to $3.20 per mil. It is only available in one shade. That is a huge downside to this problem. It is more of a little thicker cream, and here that is right there. If you are fair to light skin, this is like that perfect brightening pinky corrector shade that so many people I think would really enjoy but I feel like if you are darker than light maybe light medium this could start looking a little ashy because it does have quite a lot of a white base to it and it's quite pinky blue maybe a little peachy in the undertone but you can see it is one of the more fair products that we've swatched so far it is very hydrating if you're someone who is very oily under the eyes or your under eyes are sensitive to things feeling a little bit more weighty you might not enjoy this but for me, this replaced the Color Science Total Triple Eye Protection, I think is what it's called. That's like $90 here in Canada. This is half the price and I like it a little bit more. My second place favorite and it's a tie. And the tie is because of the color. These are both from the brand Color Science. We have the classic Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield, broad spectrum SPF 50 with a PA rating of four plus. 
So this sunscreen uses zinc oxide. It retails for $50 for 55 mils, which makes this 91 cent per mil. It's available in one shade. However, this does have a couple flankers. Like I think there is a bronze. I think there is an illuminating, which is the same formula for my understanding with different tones to them. So this is between the two. I find these work very interchangeably, but this one, the color is just off for me. And I'm gonna put this one right here. So a little bit more of a runny liquid. This one's not as liquidy as the one from Neostrata, but here it is. On my skin, it just pulls a little too peachy. It has a very kind of true peachy tone to it. And when I build it up to make it work for my skin, it just starts looking a little orange. So that is that one. Some days I wonder if this should be my number one or if it's a safe bet at number two, but this is the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Flex. This is an interesting formula. This also uses zinc oxide. It is more expensive. This is $64.35 for 55 mils, which makes this $1.17 per mil. And it is available in four tone adjusting shades, which the tone adjusting is what makes this very fascinating. So I'm gonna dispense it right here next to the other color science one. You can see it looks white. But let me see if I can do this. As I start blending, it's starting to change colors. It's very reminiscent of the Alme Smart Match from the early 2000s. And who knows, it might still be around. But here is that. Ooh. This is another one. It has more coverage than some of the other products, but the coverage on this is so, it's its almost like a second skin. It wears so beautifully. This is the sunscreen that I wear most days when I want a tinted SPF. And I remember when I went in for my very first PRP treatment in. So I think my first PRP session was in February and I wore this on that day. And I was talking to my nurse injector who I've been working with on and off for years before my PRP, she did my Botox and my fillers regularly. So I've seen her like what, twice a year for the last handful of years. She's very familiar with what my skin looks like. And when she was cleansing my forehead to get started with the PRP treatments, I had this on and I wiped over and she's like, what are you wearing? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, I didn't realize you were wearing anything. And then I wiped over it and I was like, oh, his skin's a different color. And then, I wiped a little bit more and more of it came off and she's like, what is it? And I was like, it's this new one by Color Science. It's the Sun Forgettable. It's really lovely. So here it is after it's adjusted. It does pull a little bit more on the yellow side of neutral, which works for me because it helps to balance out some of my topical redness. So here's the Color Science Flex. Here's the Color Science Sun Forgettable. The Sun Forgettable definitely has more of that orangey, peachy undertone. So this is the most expensive sunscreen, but I love it so much. And since I've started using this, it's made me reach for foundation less and less. I think since some, since beginning or since the middle or end of January, I've been doing weekly foundation reviews, testing out different foundations I own. And some days when I don't want to wear foundation or I just am not testing a foundation, like if it's on that, like my little weekend schedule where I'm not wearing foundation, I reach for this because it does everything I want a foundation to do, but it's a sunscreen. And I can build it up throughout the day. Coverage will build, but if I wear it for a couple hours and then I reapply my touch up, it doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look fake. It doesn't look artificial. It's just so wonderful. Expensive, but wonderful. That brings us to my number one tinted sunscreen. And like I said, some days I love this more than my color science. Some days I like the color science more. They're pretty interchangeable. This one does have less coverage, but this is my Old Faithful Elta MD UV Physical Broad Spectrum SPF 41 with a universal tint. So this uses zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So both of the mineral physical sunscreen filters retails for $52.20 and you get 57 grams of 
product, which breaks down to 92 cent per gram. This is only available in one shade and one size. This does have more of a soft, moussey texture, and here it is at the front of my hand right there. So this is a shade that can look a little too peachy, for my skin tone. However, it's one that goes on so kind of moussey and lightly on the skin. It just balances things out. It takes the edge off redness and it never really looks like you have coverage or a makeup product on. It's very, very pleasant to, to wear. And the shade, that peachiness, which has just enough of that kind of salmony peachy tone, it's a great shade for kind of brightening up and livening up the overall complexion. I really love this. It does excellent under both liquid and powder foundations. And I really, really enjoy it. Those are all my favorite sunscreens. Let's run through the order in which they are swatched, ranking from least favorite to most favorite. We have the My Shell. We have the La Roche Posay, which still has not dried down. It is still very glossy. We have the Australian Gold, which is looking by far the most orange. Nia Strata. We have the Dr. Sam's. We have the Paula's Choice Super Light Wrinkle Defense, which is also looking very dark now that it's starting to dry down. We have the Color Science Sun Forgettable. We have the Color Science Sun Forgettable Flex. We have the Ulta MD UV Physical. And then up here, I re-swatched my Super Goop Bright Eye, which almost looks more like a glossy highlight on my skin. But here are all of the shades. Shade is a huge thing when it comes to a tinted sunscreen, especially if you're someone like me who normally wears them in lieu of a foundation product. Finding the right shade is tricky. If the color is wrong, it's to be like you're wearing a foundation that's the wrong shade. Like it's happening to me where my sunscreen is way darker than my neck or body, but we're all friends. We're not judging each other here. <laughs> and it's just really tricky because it can be very distracting. Now we're at a day and age where I feel like most tinted sunscreens, they should take a note from someone like Color Science and release multiple shades in their formula so more people can utilize it. That being said, I've heard that the dark dark or deep shade, the darkest shade in this range is not quite dark enough for some people with very richly melanated skin tones. Still an ongoing area of opportunity, much like we have within our foundation products. If you have any suggestions for a great, preferably mineral tinted sunscreen with more of a kind of neutrally, slightly cool undertone, please let me know down below. I'm always looking to test out some great sunscreens. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos and stay tuned because the next Wednesday I'm going to be showing you all how I created this look and it is in collaboration with a very dear friend of mine here on YouTube. So I will see you all then. Bye y'all.